Okay, uh, hi guys. Today we will talk about the lesion. What is a lesion? It means submitting uh, one more sounds in a word or phrase to make it easier to pronounce. This used in formal speech, a lesion and the formal informal the sorry. Um, this this is used in formal speech. A lesion can help can help your American English sound softer and more natural. American English has some lesion patterns in informal, okay, informal speech, but about today we'll practice T and D. What are, what are your notes about the pronouns of underlines, uh, underlines words in in this sentence the formal speech uh, the formal speech the hands some movie star acts in a film about friendship between and father and son and in this case in this case sorry, in this case uh, known in a casual speech is the handsome movie star acts in a film about friendship between and father and son. Whenever, whenever T or D uh, stand between two consonants and the end of syllable, 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 it is a little uh, meaning, meaning. It is not pronounced, for example, instead of scripts, uh, we cite scripts, scripts, sorry. Uh, and the state of friendship, friendship, we cite friendship. Let's practice that the pronouns of following word using T and D elation at and uh, elation. T and D elation can occur even between two words. Example, scripts, acts, facts, dialects, temps, postcard, handsome, friendship, highland, highlands. Okay. the topic assimilation and we saw them in class um, I will start to explain that this occurs more often on frequently uh, when the consonant of the first word ends in T sound and the follows word bends in in a J sound in a J sound for example we have the uh, we have two words last year when you say last year and you are using assimilation you don't pronounce the sound the sound uh, not pronounced in this in this in this case because when you're speaking fast you you say last year the sound becomes in another sound, or also uh, when we have D or J sound, for example, in did you go, um, you, you say, did you go, the sound in the second word becomes in J sound. In the connected speech, when we have uh, a word with assimilation, and uh, it's caused the sound the word change to become in a more similar sound that the next word for example this example we we saw in class but i think that is a good example uh, for that um, green park when you say when you hear green you can you can see that the consonant M becomes in a consonant 
Mm. Uh, as this is for to prepare the mouth uh, for to say the consonant P in park. And then you say green park. Basically, when when two sound meet and create a new sound, uh, or for example, if you want to say ten men, the correct form to pronounce it is ten men. Uh, like uh, another example. Uh, another example is, for example, for example, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you at the zone T, don't pronounce it, but the zone Y becomes in another sound. Nice to meet you. And, um, that's it. Um, basically, when, when we have um, a word or many words that ends in a consonant and it means to another consonant um, create a new sound. Good day, teacher David. My name is Kevin Acosta. I'm going to talk about leaking. Um, Introduce word final post vocalic R as a leaking for when the following words begin with a vowel far off, far as, as where it for inside, near it were out. Intrusive. Many examples of leaking are. A cool word there is no R. It's an in the syllable speech of it. In order to avoid seeing the sparker tend to make use of a pause a glottal stop. It is mainly used in the case of a ending. The insertions of the R is obligatory before a suffix begin with a vowels, it is historically justified, optional, before a following word begin with a vowels, it is historically justified, after A. An intrusive R is used before the following words. It is historically unjustified. After A, O, an intrusive R is avoided before the following vowels. That, uh, I'm sorry, that insertion of intrusive R before a suffix is strongly stigmatized. Thanks. <laughs>